And here we find a Seth and a Kenny in their natural habitat. Yeah, with unmatched holes. With a 7-3 hanging oh, from the hoist. And another 7-3 blowed apart into about a million pieces. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You got the old Mongo Man out here in Kenny's garage. It's Sunday evening. Uh, boy, was it a hot one today. We made our way down to the Washington Cruisers uh, Super Cruise today. Check that video out if you get a chance. Just uh, some walking around, checking out some really nice cars. I did run into uh, an old friend of mine, Drew Benz, who had his 1955 F100 there. Boy, that is a really sharp truck. Uh, talking to Drew real quick on that truck, he said that it took him two years start to finish eight hour days to get that truck to where it's at so very beautiful ride what i want to talk to you about here tonight is uh wheezy that's the truck that's in kj's shop right now this truck belongs to seth moore that's kj's buddy and uh he has not had much luck with this truck wheezy started out life as a 351 windsor uh with a zf5 speed in it and that is a zf5 is the one that actually ended up in aggie but as you can see there's a 7.3 that now lives between the fender wells, and I've been kind of hinting around that KJ and Seth were working on this truck, putting a new motor in it. The motor that was in it actually uh, was the original motor that he did the diesel swap with, and he ran into some problems with it. This is that engine right here, and what this engine is, 7.3 liter with a 444E, uh, and of course this is a Huey engine, so you can see the high pressure fuel pump here, the IPR mounted down low there, the uh, pressure sensor is missing in the head, had to put that in the new motor, but here's your uh, high energy unit injectors, rocker arms, the whole nine yards. And this engine uh, was not running well at all. He actually went as far as to do a bunch of work to this engine, these are uh, rebuilt injectors, they are baby swamps, and this thing's had tune after tune done to it, and it just continued to fail. So Seth went and found this engine and actually this engine came out of a van. Uh, guy told Seth that it ran really well and uh, in fact it looked really nice. It was uh, it, you know on the exterior anyway. But as you can see here in the truck right now the passenger side head has been removed. That is what I want to talk to you about is why that head is off. So the unfortunate case in this scenario was uh, when we went to start this truck yesterday, uh, KJ was out here working on it, and he uh, had me turn the key on, and immediately upon turning the key on, I could hear fuel hitting the ground. So this has an e-fuel kit on it. Normally it would have a manual fuel pump mounted down in the V of the engine. Seth has removed that and installed an e-fuel kit. As you can see there, there's your pressure regulator and your gauge. Uh, same thing that Laney has on it. So what's kind of funny about them e-fuel kits is they use a high pressure fuel pump off of one of the old uh, bullnose Fords. So this e-fuel kit uses the high pressure fuel pump off of that truck, but I digress. Um, so immediately upon turning the key on, leaking fuel out of the back of the head back there, hitting the ground and uh, well, KJ climbed up in there and in the back of that head, I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but let's go out here. In the back of that head, you see a eighth inch pipe fitting there that's screwed into the head. And then that goes to your fuel supply lines, high pressure fuel supply. And on the e-fuel kits, that's 40 PSI. So that's eighth inch pipe, and I believe it just goes to dash four or a quarter inch GIC. So KJ had climbed up into the truck, and uh, upon climbing into the truck, he uh, immediately went after that fitting and said, Dad, that fitting's tight. I said, oh boy, um, I hope he didn't do what I think he did. And sure enough, that is exactly what he did. When he first put the e-fuel kit on, he said he had some problems with those uh, fittings. And as you can see in this situation, let's see if I can get it to focus. <clears throat> you can actually see the crack right there. And that's where it was leaking fuel from. So unfortunately, that head is now junk because of that crack. The tiny little eighth inch fitting with this crack has junked that head. And of course, with that head being junk, KJ jumped right in on it, yanked it out of there, 
And now their plan is to take one of the heads either off, off of the engine that I just showed you that's outside, or we have another 7.3 that's down in the shed. Uh, they're gonna take one of those heads, get it looked at, uh, have it gone through, and hopefully we're in good condition there uh, and get this thing back together. As you can see, this engine is in really nice condition inside. Uh, of course, with the head just being taken off, KJ hasn't drained any of the fluids or anything out of it. This thing was bored. So these are 030 pistons. Let's see if I can find it here. There we go. 0 0.030 cam side up. Boy, they tell you a little bit of everything there, don't they? And like I said, uh, the inside of this engine looks really, really nice. And we did get this thing to run even uh, with that fuel leak. It fired right up, believe it or not, and uh, sounded great. So we definitely want to make this one run again. So I guess all I really wanted to share with you was that, uh, you know, I take this stuff for granted being in the industry as long as I was and working with this kind of stuff. You just got to know when enough is enough. You know, you don't want to run the eighth inch pipe plugs or any pipe plug in really tight, especially in that situation when there's very little uh, cast iron around the uh, the boss that's being screwed into because you will crack it. And I'll show you here essentially where that crack is at. It is on that hole and you can see just how small the walls of that are. And you can imagine how easily it would be to crack that if you run that fitting in too tight. So yeah, old Seth, he doesn't have much luck in uh, my heart really goes out for him. In these situations, you know, this is the game that we play. Uh, if you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that uh, this is an emotional roller coaster that you're constantly on. You know, one day everything works out. The next day, well, you crack ahead because of a fuel fitting, you know. So, but they are uh, endeavoring to persevere. They're going to get this one put back together. I think uh, the head probably will get taken apart tomorrow and uh, go out and see what's going on with it. So. Until then, we will see you guys later. You got the old Mongo man out here in KJ's garage. See you later. Wheezy.